Hands off with Scott Barry, the head baseball coach at the University of Southern Mississippi. They went to Jacksonville State this weekend, so a little road trip over the weekend and got two of three. And Scott Barry joins us right now. Scott, thanks for your time. Uh, have nothing to do with baseball. Just a random question. Are you a coffee guy? Do, do you drink coffee? I do. I do. How do you drink your coffee? No, no additives. Just okay. straight up. Hey guys, I got that one right. We, we guessed that before we uh, we talked to you. We yeah, had we a coffee that. conversation that was off the rails. I, I figured you drank it black. So uh, good to know. You, you and I can continue to be friends after uh, yeah. after that. <laughs> I drink and I and I drink way too much of it. Yeah, I'm I'm afraid I'm kind of uh, on board with you with that as uh, as well. Tell me about this weekend, Scott. Two or three uh, get blanked in the uh, the first game on Friday, but then able to backside the series. H- How did you feel about the way your guys played this weekend? Well, you know, coming off uh, three consecutive losses dating back to last Sunday against UConn uh, and then rolling into uh, Pearl against State and not doing very well there. And then, of course, you know, we're hoping to get things turned on Friday night with Stanley on the mound. But met a uh, really, really tough Jacksonville State. Uh, club that uh, uh, really uh, physical offense that you know really just beat us pretty handedly on uh, on on Friday night. Uh, we missed on a couple opportunities. Obviously, the strikeouts continue to haunt us on Friday. But you know, Saturday, you know, our, our team showed up with uh, with an attitude, I guess, of uh, for whatever reason. Uh, you know, I wish I. I knew the answer. I'd, I'd sell it and, and make a lot of money off from it. But, <laughs> you know, they uh, they really showed up and played probably one of their best games of the year, Richard, in all honesty, in all facets. And, you know, I think it was uh, the, the pitching of Walker Powell and what goes unnoticed, people that don't, that, that, that didn't watch the game. Walker took a ball. I think it was the second or third hitter of the game. Uh, off the ankle and of course i'm thinking here we go you know (laughs) what else can happen here and and he was able to uh you know not only finish that inning but cover the next six and and really just led the led the charge for us and used the long ball in a couple of innings and and really just played uh, a very very good baseball game championship caliber and then we followed it up on sunday i mean honestly we we picked up right where we left off on saturday and was very very pleased to get that that road series win. You said if you could bottle up and sell it, you, you'd be a, a rich man. And there are coaches all over the country that would, you know, kind of looking for that it thing that, that you find with your team. Is that something that you think can can carry forward? I mean, is there a scenario where you think maybe they, they flipped a switch mentally uh, more than anything with the way they played on Saturday and Sunday? Well, we all know the, the mind's a powerful thing and how we, how we think and how – uh, definitely um, creates the actions that that we produce, and I think with hitting, people talk about hitting's contagious. Well, just the opposite can be contagious too. And uh, you know, Bob Getty and the Eagle Hour, we were talking earlier, and and I said, you know, he asked, you know, what what creates just all of a sudden a couple of hits and a team takes off, and you know, is it is it that all of a sudden this this pitcher got punched in the mouth and he's got a little bit of a weakness and and he doesn't turn up the volume? You know, the good ones do. You know, the good ones are able to dial it in and create a ground ball double play and get out of it. But, you know, if there's one that's a little bit weak, then, you know, now he starts doubting himself. So it becomes that chess game a little bit. But, you know, for whatever reason, our guys, uh, you know, we uh, obviously – Wednesday against Mississippi State, 20 strikeouts, a school record. That's probably the lowest of low that, that we've ever been. And and, uh, and then we follow it up on Friday with 12 strikeouts against their Friday guy. But then on Saturday, we only strike out four times and Sunday seven times. So we had much more competitive at-bats. We put the ball in play and put pressure on Jacksonville State, which was, in my mind, the key uh, uh, to those ball games. not to mention you know the pitching has, has been pretty solid the whole year. As, as well. When you're talking about an at bat or hitting being contagious, can't you sometimes have a guy that has a quality at bat? Maybe he ends up with a walk or he hits it really hard, but he saw a bunch of pitches and he fouled off and he was locked in. And all of a sudden, that can kind of instill some confidence in the guy behind him. And then that kind of trickles its way down the order. Is that overplaying it or is that kind of? how the mind game in baseball works sometimes. 
No, I think you're spot on. And a strikeout can also be a great at bat. In all honesty, hmm. if you're fouling off a bunch of pitches and you run a guy's pitch count up, you know, we've had a couple of bats this year where a guy has eventually struck out, but he ran the guy up there nine and 10 pitches. Well, yeah. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, you're wearing that guy down and, and that makes that, that other coach start thinking, Hey, you know, his pitch count starting to get up there. And of course the next inning, if you're running back out there, you're trying to buy some pitches back, you know, you're trying to get contact early. So, you know, there's all different ways that you great at bats without having a hit. And and I think that's what kids you know, what they what they fail to understand a lot of times is is the only way I can have a great at bat is to get a hit. You know, a great at bat may be a sacrifice bunt, Richard. I mean in a situation. Yeah. It may be giving yourself up and hitting a ground ball with a runner at second, nobody out. You know, you're out but you're moving your third to hand it over to the next guy. So there's a lot of things that go into it and I think just the uh the misconception is is you gotta have a hit to have a great at bat, and that's just certainly not the case. Isn't it unique how baseball is such a team sport, but but it's such an individualized team sport? Yes, it is. I mean, because the individual is what makes it all happen, and, and of course, that's that is becomes the uh, the component that brings the whole team together. And it could be very very simply first and or second and third, nobody out, and a ground ball to the right side that scores one and moves one up. You know, that's a a great individual at bat, but that's a great team at bat because now he hands it over to the next guy who hits a sacrifice fly, and all of a sudden it's two to nothing on two outs. You know, so uh, you're exactly right. You know, each individual is accountable for for his role and and, and his his ability to get in there and compete for the team, but it's a true reflection of the whole team and how each individual competes. Scott Berry visiting with his head baseball coach at Southern Miss. They take two of three this weekend from Louisiana Lafayette. Get things, or excuse me, from Jacksonville State. We'll get to Louisiana Lafayette in just a second. That's coming up this weekend to uh, to backside the series, get a road series win. Take me just a little deeper on uh, on Walker Powell. Uh, this was the guy that you expected to see when you were on the mound. I, I'm assuming, or when he's on the mound, I'm assuming with seven innings and eight strikeouts and. Just feels like a guy. There, there's not much at this point that he hasn't seen in college baseball. You know, he's been with us for a long time. This is actually uh, COVID six year. Uh, you know, last year he wow. was a fifth year guy, and and you know, uh, uh, Walker's a guy that's had two Tommy John surgeries. He had a Tommy John surgery his senior year in high school. Uh, we we brought him on. We uh, we redshirted him that first year, and then the next year he uh, in the conference tournament. In the fifth inning against Marshall, feels a pop in his arm, and all of a sudden now you got two Tommy John surgeries. So, mm. you know, that's that's kind of uncommon, but I think it's a credit for Walker and, and his ability to really persevere uh, those injuries and work himself back and work hard. And, you know, he's been a very consistent starter for us for a long time, and, and I think his team, when they're playing behind him, they really have that feel. That he's that they have a chance to win. Uh, he doesn't get real sped up on anything. He really kind of controls the game and slows it down, and and just gives you that that uh, that presence that you want out of that starter. Scheduling quirk that you don't have a midweek game this year. Is this, I mean, is this a week where you thought you had a midweek game and it fell through? We did. We actually did have one, but uh, actually, what happened was is when we had to add eight games to our conference schedule because of the eight weeks and, and an extra game each week, then we had to subtract some from midweek games. So there was a midweek game scheduled uh, for tomorrow night, but it, we had to we had to go ahead and cancel it uh, because we were over our limit when we added the eight to the, to the conference. Gotcha. So no midweek games, little time to, to rest up, be good and healthy going into what i got to believe is going to be a fun series this weekend with Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns coming to your place. Such a good program, good team year in, year out. Hey, exciting weekend coming up, right? It is. You know, it's going to be a very challenging weekend. Uh, Louisiana Lafayette has uh, has got a good good club. They're nine and four right now. I've played really good baseball. They uh, they go to Startville on Wednesday before they come to us on Friday. But really uh, solid starting pitching on on the weekend. Uh, you know, offensively, you know they're kind of helter skelter. They just kind of do some things that uh, aren't 
normally see. You know, a lot of delayed steals, a lot of running bunts. Uh, just, you know, they, they may lay one down with two strikes. I mean, just try to catch you off guard and stuff. So a lot of pressure on the, uh, from the offensive standpoint and, uh, you know, and, and, and really good starting pitching. Well, we're certainly looking forward to that this weekend. No, it'll be a great atmosphere at the Pete's. And, Scott, as always, we appreciate your time on a Monday afternoon. Richard, thank you. That's Scott Perry, head baseball.